Hello and welcome to another special edition of Wake Up and Live with the Arts. We are so excited uh, to be interviewing a very special guest of ours. And of course all our guests are special, but this one feels like uh, meeting with an old friend who you haven't seen for a while. We are happy to be spending the next few minutes with Margot Copeland. And what I'm going to do uh, is read just a little bit about who she is, only take a minute, because this is one heck of a lady who is in charge of corporate diversity and philanthropy at Key Bank. She's an executive vice president here at Key Bank. She has a resume, a professional profile that is so extensive it would take us the whole interview time in order to tell you all about her achievements and her accomplishments. But before I turn the camera on her, let me just tell you a little bit of some of the distinguished awards and honors she has received. Oh, in what, just the last five minutes? <laughs> okay, she has one of the most exciting is to be named one of the 100 most influential black, uh, blacks in corporate America. And she was recognized in Savoy Magazine, a national magazine. Uh, she's a top executive in diversity, according to Black Enterprise Magazine, and that is a prestigious uh, national magazine uh, that we get to read. One of the most one hundred one of the one hundred most powerful women in Cleveland. So you know this lady is dynamite, as who just uh, that kid used to say way back on <laughs> um, on the show. And so it goes on and on and on. Cleveland woman of influence and uh, she's a master innovator by the Smart Business Network. She's been featured in Northern Ohio Lives Magazine's Reflection, African American Achievement in Cleveland, YWCA Career Woman of Achievement, and the list goes on and on and on. But this is Margot Copeland, my friend and yeah. colleague. So nice Margot, it is nice <laughs> having you on the show. Thank you. Uh, we finally managed, like all busy women and corporate women, it took a little bit of scheduling to well, get you here, you. Thank but you we finally much. are carving out some time because uh, what you do needs to be known by a lot of the, I don't want to say average American folks around town or Cleveland folks, because not everybody would know that you exist, that your company uh, does what it does as uh, diversity and philanthropy. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do here at Key Bank? Well, first of all, Sue, thank you so much for mm -hmm. having me on the show today, and I'm thrilled to be a part of this uh, session and the program. Uh, I've been blessed for the last 10 years. I'm mm -hmm. celebrating my 10th anniversary at Key Bank Hot on dog. November 1. Oh, this is and just the, in time. Yeah, this is a perfect time, uh -huh. and uh, I have been very blessed to serve in a role which, quite frankly, has been um, a lifelong dream from a career standpoint for mm -hmm. me. Um, I have the privilege of uh, leading the philanthropic activities for Key Bank, not just in Cleveland, but across the entire franchise. Okay. Uh, so coast to coast from Maine to Alaska, I'm involved from that standpoint. That's why my schedule gets a little busy because <laughs> uh, I spend a lot of time, unfortunately, outside of Cleveland. Do you have your um, own private jet at your services yet? I do yet? not. I wish I did, but I know the Continental Airlines folks very well. Very well. <laughs> Face and name recognition. All the sky uh -huh. snow me that very well. <laughs> So, um, so that's one part of what I do with philanthropy and our in, uh, nonprofit investments that we make uh, with uh, our, our partners. Um, our larger investments certainly are made in the greater Cleveland marketplace because this is our home, our headquarter location, and mm -hmm. we're very proud that we are a part of this community and we say community is key. So yes. that is very, very uh, important to us. Uh, in addition, I do lead the uh, diversity uh, office for the corporation. I've done that also for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So it's been quite a, a wonderful journey here at the bank, and I uh, have enjoyed every single moment of it. Well, you look like you're wearing it well. Thank you. Thank uh, you. For our audience, the two people on the planet who don't know <laughs> uh, the term philanthropy or the term diversity as it applies to your position, could you fill us in a little bit about what exactly philanthropy refers to and diversity for your program? Certainly. I think probably the easiest way to define philanthropy is charitable contributions and mm -hmm. charitable giving. That term, however, is not used today in today's philanthropic environment because organizations that are trying to drive change and help underserved individuals don't really want to be seen as charities. Okay. They really want to be seen as uh, focused organizations that are about the business of transformational change for the constituency that they are serving. So 
So what we prefer to call it is we are making philanthropic investments. So this okay. is not just handing over a check to a, a worthy nonprofit and putting your picture in a magazine and walking away. No. If we make a grant, we're going to trust you, the nonprofit, to deliver and perform against that client set that you serve. And then we're going to measure how you do that. So before you come back to us to ask for additional dollars, we want to see your performance against what you said you do. You said you're going to serve X and serve it in this way. And uh, we are trusting you to do that. These are state shareholder dollars uh, that we would expect that kind of investment from us as you would get an investment for any business. So philanthropy really is a forward thinking term. It's not unique to key. It's uh, universally mm -hmm. applied across corporate America now as uh, funders are looking very, very seriously as those organizations that uh, should be uh, supported to drive the changes that we need to see driven in society. On the diversity side, a whole different, I put taking one hat off, put putting the other, <laughs> other on. Really diversity, uh, again, is kind of stuck in uh, 2000 uh, and, well, pre-2000 terms, pre-millennial. Mm -hmm. It's really more DNI, as we say, in the field, or diversity and inclusion, okay. so that we want to have workplaces that are reflective of the communities that we live mm -hmm. and work. And uh, so that our customers see themselves when they're meeting with us, and that no matter who you are, what color you are, what, which gender you are, that you are uh, sensitive and, and, and able to work across lines of cultures and ethnicities uh, so that you are best serving our client set. KeyBank exists in this community and the other communities where we are because we have an outstanding customer service record. Well, to do that, we, make, we have to make sure that our frontline people are very good at dealing with all sorts of people. So part of what we do at the bank is to make sure that we are identifying the right type of talent that can come into our workplace as well as represent our communities and reflect the best that there is in our given cities. So you do represent an opportunity for diverse, uh, for the old-fashioned word, diversity employment, so that if um, there were cat people around Cleveland, and sure enough, people need jobs, are there, uh, people can apply at Key Bank for different types of employment that your company may offer and you are most interested in seeking those candidates with skills and qualities and reflective of our larger community. Is that you are, you are, that is a great, uh, you've encapsulated that quite well. That's exactly it. Uh, and I would encourage anyone to go on key.com mm -hmm. and go to our uh, employment website where on um, any given day, all the opportunities that are open at that particular time sure. are listed there. And mm -hmm. if there's some opportunities that align with their interests, their background, and their skill set, I would definitely encourage them to apply. Okay, sounds great. So now there you have it. We're providing uh, employment referral service here <laughs> for, for KeyBank. Key.com. Key. Key. And there's hardly a person alive in Cleveland who doesn't know KeyBank. <laughs> and there's, I'm going to, uh, I shouldn't have sued, but I'm going to guess that there opportunities all the way from entry level to management level and all sorts Correct. of skill sets uh, required. Labor, management, service, you name it. A absolutely. Okay. Well, that, that's important to know in this particular job market. And I think the key thing is that people of all backgrounds can uh, try to upgrade their employment status. Absolutely. Now, going back a little bit to the philanthropic part of it, as uh, Wake Up and Live is a nonprofit organization, so we know what it's like to uh, get grants, a little bit of grant we, uh, from Neighborhood Connections, United Black Fund are, are two sources who've been very kind to us. Uh, in terms of the kinds of nonprofit organizations that Key Bank, your philanthropy department, division, your hat, mm -hmm. you know, covers, tell us a little bit about the types of organizations that you've been involved with. Uh, that might be good candidates to inquire further about are they, you know, their eligibility to be considered uh, for some of the key banks' diverse uh, uh, ph philanthropic uh, contributions? Correct. Okay. I would say that uh, one common theme that drives our philanthropic work is around economic self-sufficiency. Ah. And by mm -hmm. that, we want organizations that are going to be preparing their client set to be financially whole mm -hmm. and to be able to mainstream effectively in um, their respective communities. So nonprofits that have a very clear focus around 
workforce development, mm -hmm. uh, a focus around financial education, and certainly those that operate in a very inclusive and diverse way are certainly great conversations that we enjoy having. Now, as I step back a little bit from there, we are very, very <coughs> focused and supportive of educational institutions. Uh, primarily in the 10 years that I've been here, we've made a number of grants to institutions of higher education because it's important to see children or young people, I shouldn't call them children, <laughs> young people uh -huh. who are prepared to go to college, be able to not only enroll in college, but more importantly, graduate from college. So a lot of effort has um, been put forward into providing the platform for that to happen. But I must say that in the last uh, two years or so, we're taking now a much closer look on pipeline, getting children really from middle school through high school so that they can be college ready. So I'm very pleased with the kinds of uh, grants that we're making in education, which is very important. And those grants are targeted at children from underserved communities, meaning children who primarily are African American mm -hmm. or Hispanic. Mm -hmm. So we are very, very proud of that. I'll give you one example. One of the grants I'm very, very excited about is with the Cleveland Clinic at Lerner College of Medicine, where we uh, have funded a full scholarship for uh, students of color to matriculate in medical school to be trained wow. to be physician scientists. Wow. And we are now about to receive our third scholar. So we have two already. One will graduate in the spring of 12 and another uh, will graduate in 13. So it's a very prideful thing to be a part of something mm -hmm. that you know will pay very great dividends uh, down the road. And I've, I've met these and spent time with these uh, fellows uh, mm -hmm. as uh, and, but that's an example of, of one of the things that you know we're very proud to be involved in. We just made a grant to the Cleveland um, Board of Education, or to the, oh, excuse me, not Board of Education, to the Cleveland Municipal School District. School District. And um, we have been um, supporters of the STEM High School uh, for a number of years. Mm -hmm. that, that grant was already in place. Well, we had an opportunity to look at one of the success because to get more money, you've got to be successful in what you did. You do it already. So the STEM yes. High School has been successful. And now what the uh, superintendent asked us to do was to consider uh, really uh, helping to restructure six of the middle schools so that they are preparing middle schoolers to go into the STEM High School. So we just made a, a $700,000 grant for six uh, schools. There'll be a fabrication uh, laboratory on wheels, a truck that'll move oh around my. to uh -huh. all of those schools to help children understand and appreciate the math and the science applications and what it means to, you know, to be technologically ready for the 21st century. Our children have to have a rigorous preparation to go on to college. And when you look at the results of where the STEM high school, when they first meet the child and where they're performing on those, those state tests versus where they're performing. Um, at the 11th and 12th grade level, it's just uh, it's a wonderful transition to see that the rigor of that preparation, because I believe firmly that just about every child can learn and every child can learn in their own way. When you're putting a child in a rich environment like that with those kinds of exposures, the sky is the limit. And when I want those kids to be able to come out of high school, go on to college of their choice and be very successful in college and then obviously graduate and become successful practicing adults in society. Well, old educators never die. We just change hats as well. But for those who don't know, STEM, uh, correct me if I don't have it quite right, science, tech, engineering, and math. Correct. That that's the acronym that's right. for STEM. That's right. And the reason I know, have a little knowledge is because I still work with the Upward Bound program at Tri-C Metro. Uh, Felisa Eford is our director, and we work specifically with the Cleveland Municipal School District students <laughs> from 9 through 12 all for the purpose of helping them not only get through high school, but as you say, prepare them for college with studying for the ACTs, the SATs, helping them with their financial aid uh, packaging, help them with um, their, their um, scholarship applications, essays, college entrance essays. So the program is designed to give our Cleveland students a leg up to not only get them into college, but keep them there, you know, retention. Retention and is such a critical yeah, issue, And, so and seeing, the, seeing them graduate. Yeah, well, yeah. programs like Upward Bound have a rich legacy and a history mm -hmm. of really providing that type of support to 
our children and making sure that they have uh, all that they need, have full capacity to matriculate successfully through high school and uh, then on to college. I could say that another partnership that we're very proud of is at Tri-C, okay. where we have career centers on each of the campuses, mm -hmm. including a corporate college. It's mm -hmm. where anyone in the county, not just Tri-C students, right. where anyone in the county can go and get prepared to enter the employment market. Uh, mm -hmm. There'll be people there that can help you build a resume, uh, coach you on how to dress for an interview, uh, role play with you on interview preparation. There's even a small incubator there for people who want to start a business. Okay, so yes. when you look mm -hmm. at education being something that we at Key Bank value and like to do, we can start with the young ones and all and keep and on those, going. And those <laughs> of them who look more like you and me. So. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> learning, yeah. learning is important. Life. Yeah. Well, I've long, long believed in the concept of lifelong learning. Absolutely. And now the way the Western world has gone and there's no such thing as uh, traditional retirement. You just move on from one career to another or one employment position to another. And this retraining uh, issue is key. I'll keep using that word. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's, <laughs> That's okay. Word. That's, That's a, a good, good word. word. Yes, yeah. Yes. And especially with all this computer technology, because the world has changed that you just can't survive without it Absolutely. and function without it. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, switching gears a little bit, we focused on your education programs and all the things you're involved in that way. But you don't stop there. You keep on going. There, There's a gazillion other projects, programs, and services that come under your umbrella. And uh, my associate who's in the background, Michelle Faye, <laughs> you know, she's here. And she was uh, telling us uh, to remember to talk about the Ohio, the football, um, the classic. The classic, yes, yeah. Yes, the Ohio classic. Yeah, talk about that as, as one example of the many, 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 many things you're involved in. Well, I just left a meeting on uh -huh. that same subject a few okay. moments ago before I uh, came to join you for the interview. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, um, I'm a graduate of the Historically Black College, and that's uh, Hampton University. Hampton University, and yes. And I wear it on my heart, uh -huh. I wear it every day, and I'm proudest to say that my children, each are graduates of uh, Spelman College, mm -hmm. Morehouse College, and Central State University. So I have a deep affinity for not only what uh, historically what the HBCUs have meant to our country, yes. but what they mean to the individual in um, meeting the student where they are at age 18 mm -hmm. and taking many of us across a bridge so that we are by the time we get to 21, 22 when you're graduating. And yes, I do believe in graduating in four years. I made that very clear for each one of my, <laughs> my children. children. Said, we're on the four year plan. plan. We're not on the scenic route through college. And don't have so many student loans <laughs> that you right. have to come back home and live in the house for another five years. Well, that's years. another conversation. Well, that's another. But yes, another kind. Wasn't as successful with that one. With that one. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, but really, and each one of them, uh, bless their hearts, did finish in four years. And cool. so my last yeah. one graduated, my youngest graduated this past spring from Central Hot State. Yeah. So it, it was quite a, a moment of celebration for us. Uh, the classic really is a way to support one the schools that are participating in the games. It's also a way to lift up the roles that these schools play in the lives of young people. Mm -hmm. And what we really want to see going forward uh, with the classic for year two next year, is, and I'm very proud of the um, Cleveland Sports Commission because they have made a commitment, they made, when they started on this journey, they made a three-year commitment to this. So not just kind of the in and out, right. knowing it's going to take us some time to really build the um, audience that you know, to get there. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we were thinking of some ways that we could probably make some tweaks and adjustments so that we can get more people there. And I said, if if I get my way, and I'm not speaking on behalf of the Sports Commission, but if I get my way, I want to see every school send its um, cheerleaders, its football teams, mm -hmm. and its um, bands to the game. Every school in Cuyahoga County, no matter wow. what side of town, yes. private, uh -huh. parochial, what have you, because I think we all can learn mm -hmm. by appreciating what the value of these schools and seeing them in that element. We may even do something as much as, you know, finding ways to engage uh, the high schoolers in some of the activities around the classic for next year. And so all of that's on the drawing board right mm -hmm. now. Again, I'm a advisory person. I'm just advising and we're one of the uh, funders. So 
um, we get to uh, obviously uh, think through, you know, with the leadership of the commission. But I'm very proud of Dave Gilbert and his operation and the intense commitment that um, the commission has. Mm -hmm. So that I do expect that we're going to have a fine product next year. We're, you know, closing in on which teams will be playing. Uh, in the classic next year and all of that's going to be fun and exciting and all the sponsors i mean we're all invested i can't think of one that i know of that's not going to return and be involved uh, next year next year yes okay switching gears because my brains are fried i mean there's <laughs> my word and you do all this in a given day yeah. <laughs> question going back to you are a proud graduate of hampton and perhaps even before then how in the world did you get started on your career Path. You ended up in financial uh, matters here, Key Bank. You have a track record of having moved up through different businesses and organizations to arrive at this point 10 years ago. What in the world grabbed you when you were six years old or 16 years old or 26 years old mm -hmm. to say, this is me, this is where I'm going? We don't have enough time to answer <laughs> that question. So I'll just be real brief uh -huh. with it. The the two names, uh, Thelma and Lloyd James. Okay. My parents. Your parents. My father. I grew up in Virginia, mm -hmm. and uh, in a small town, Petersburg. And my father was a Baptist minister, mm -hmm. and my mother was an eighth grade math teacher. Okay. And I was their only child, and they had me late in life. So you can imagine I was indulged sure. a lot. So mm -hmm. not only did they indulge me, but all their friends, whose children were pretty grown, their friends like having a little one around, so they indulged me too. So yes, I was spoiled. Okay. Um, my three children have taken that out of me now. But uh, so I don't, <laughs> Payback is I, a I, monster. I forgotten, yeah. I've forgotten what being spoiled felt like. Okay. But, uh, but back, no, seriously, uh, I'd say spoiled in a very funny way in terms of how old, uh, you know, You were only the center are, of their attention. Yeah, you know, yeah. only children just carry that label around. But you know, Watch out, my be, daughter Heidi will be watching this yeah. and she's going to bring it back she's to gotta me. It's got to be tough to be the only child. You know, gotta, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a real, it's a uh -huh. real uh, baggage that we carry with that. Uh -huh. But seriously, I think because of that focused attention, and the belief that was instilled in me at a time when, I mean, I grew up as a beneficiary of the civil rights movement, you know, yes. whereas my father being an activist in our town uh, and my mother obviously supporting him and his work, mm -hmm. um, you know, Y.T. Walker was in Petersburg and um, Milton Reed was in some of the old guard from the civil rights mm -hmm. movement, you know, came through that whole time. And I remember meeting individuals like that, even being in their homes. So, so it was an extraordinary time to grow up as a child. I went to the first uh, integrated high school in the county that I was wow. growing up in. And, uh -huh. and at that time, it wasn't like walking into a place where everybody was happy to see you come. Mm -hmm. It was a very difficult time. In fact, um, the kids that I went to high school with, the black students that I, we went to high school with, we were in school with sons and daughters of the Ku Klux Klan because that was the... Uh, the uh, head, state headquarters for the Klan, okay. where we grew up. So it was a very awkward and difficult time. And what was very interesting, where those uh, students who were the sons and daughters, not all of them, mm -hmm. of course mm -hmm. not all of them, but we knew that there was a core group that, you know, that was very difficult to engage with. Um, the black students were primarily from professional homes. Our mothers, not just mine, all of our mothers were working women, and most of our mothers were school teachers because okay. back in those days, that was that's all women were allowed to do. Pretty much the option. And all the fathers were professional because we lived right there, another HBCU, Virginia State College in mm -hmm. Petersburg. I could walk Virginia State in five minutes from where I lived. I see. So you had kids whose parents were affiliated with the college or were dentists or physicians or attorneys. Next door neighbor to, was the uh, dean of the chemistry department. Uh, I was, so I got through 11th grade chemistry because, <laughs> because of him. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, so the point is, it was a rich environment to grow up in. You were affirmed, and I and I saw success models uh, in my neighborhood and in those things, those culturally enriching things that my parents exposed me to. But they undergirded who I am. So to go to Hampton. Uh, after that kind of upbringing, Hampton just pretty much, you know, just sealed the deal and just just took me to where I needed to be as an adult. Mm -hmm. So that by the time that I got out of college, uh, it was just nothing in me that felt that I could be turned around or deterred. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what it takes to build that in a child. It takes mm -hmm. something rare and unique. 
because to varying degrees we're successful in instilling that. Mm -hmm. I have three children, three very different children, and to varying degrees, uh, one has a strong ego sense and the other ones is always challenging and very <laughs> doubting anything happens going ever happen in his life. So, uh -huh. they, so it's just, uh, uh, it's, I don't know. You have a but spectrum to deal with. a spectrum with. to deal with. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I don't think I'm any unique from any other family. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, um, Thelma and Lloyd James invested their all in me. And mm -hmm. that's what I've tried to do as a parent. And what did you, just let me ask, what did you major in in college? Was it, and was it consistent with what you ended up being? Or was it totally different career fields that, you, that you've gone through? I was a physics major in college. Good golly molly. Yeah, no. And, I, and that was my mother's idea. It okay. wasn't mine. And uh, funny story, uh, I was a physics, physics major, and freshman year, I just knew I did not want to do that. And uh -huh. I came home at the end of my freshman year, and I told her I wanted to switch my major to business. I see. Uh -huh. You would have thought I'd come home and said I wanted to drop out of school. She just had a fit. She well, that was like me saying I wanted to be an actor back <laughs> in the day. Yeah. And you should see what my family <laughs> told me. Yeah, yeah. So she went into a meltdown. And uh -huh. so I got the physics degree because that's what she wanted me to do. Uh -huh. And uh, I have a whole, when, I was, when I'm speaking to young people at high school or college level, I said, I have two degrees that I don't apply. I've never uh -huh. applied in my, um, my work. But I also have a wonderful God who has led me and positioned me oh, yes. uh, throughout. And uh, mm -hmm. it's just always been a preparation that I said when preparation meets opportunity, that's when it comes together. And the one thing, not the one thing, not the only thing, but one very important thing that the physics discipline uh, did for me, what it teaches you how to think, it teaches you how to think critically and problem solving mm -hmm. because that's what you're doing. So when you can bring a problem into a situation and you want to get all the input, I typically, depending on, I mean, I can't obviously do rocket science, but typically I can pretty much, after hearing or seeing, can kind of discreetly look at some components or elements and try to, you know, get to resolution. So you know how to yes. analyze and interpret. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So that's a skill we use in acting when yes. we do cold okay. readings as well. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, so now, uh, granted, your parents were major influences and inspiration. Uh, who, in addition to your parents, has inspired you to keep, because it hadn't been easy. There's no way you have arrived at this point in your personal and professional life that it's been all smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. Who, and you did mention God, which is mm -hmm. fine, that's yes. a, but are there any earthly or human beings in addition who help keep you going when, as Dr. Robert Schuler says, when the going gets tough. Absolutely. Too many to name, and I don't want to okay, leave them leave out. Them out. Yes. But I have been the beneficiary of uh, mentors and sponsors, and mm -hmm. that's, those are two different things entirely. Things entirely. Yes. And um, I would say, in terms of sponsorship here at Key Bank, um, very early on, there was a senior executive that took great interest in my getting established in the corporation, and he literally um, helped position me from uh, marketplace to marketplace. So we would take a trip to Syracuse or to Seattle or to Denver or to mm -hmm. Albany, wherever, to make sure I was my work was positioned not just in Cleveland but throughout the franchise. That's what you call sponsorship because yes. he was putting his imprimatur on me, and I have benefited from that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a it was a, um, a blessed way to begin my career at Key. But even prior to that, um, whether it's a white male or a black female or a Hispanic um, individual, I mean, I've had such a wide stripe of individuals throughout my career that have been placed for either mentoring moments or sponsorship that's been incredible. The one thing that I say to uh, individuals who are looking for mentors, I said, a good mentee, the first thing you have to do is know what you don't know and shut your mouth and listen. listen. And I was mm -hmm. very good at listening and absorbing information and then incorporating that into how I then would pursue. Um, so it's, I can't say that I did every single thing that mentors or sponsors told me to do, you do things your way, but I was a very good student, if you will, as it relates to that, to build, to build, to grow, and following advice. Even today, where you have individuals who are just a bit more seasoned than you, and they don't have to be older, but just seasoned, seasoned than you, yes. or knowledgeable about you, that you have some wisdom and insights. Exactly, yes. and you're, you reach out to them and seek uh, their advice. Mm -hmm. and. So you have more of a collaboration of mentors and feedback systems, um, your own board of advisors, if you will, that yes. really helps you um, get from point A to point B. 
and went off camera, uh, you and Michelle Fay, who's shy today, uh, that is an area of her interest and expertise because she is involved with mentoring programs and she's a mentor herself. So you two can kind of chat would about love to. yeah, yeah would uh, love to. that how important. Yeah. And I've had a, obviously I've had a few in my life sure. as well when I was first getting my track record going. Yes. And as we begin to you know close for for today, uh, share with us if you will. Um, I guess kind of two things. One, some uh, your insight, your wisdom, your insight about. If you were to tell the audience about going after their passions, their careers, their dreams, what would you suggest? That's number one. And then let's end with what are some of your personal aspirations and dreams as you see yourself moving forward personally and professionally? Sure. Well, I think the, the one word that pops into my uh, head, and there are others, is authenticity. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think an individual must be authentic. You've got to be honest. You've got to be true. Um, you, you have to really cut the pretense. I think people who really know me well know that I speak with a great deal of clarity. Mm -hmm. I prefer to use that term versus candor. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't think people are unclear, you mm -hmm. know, when I make a point. Yes. And I do try to, especially as I've moved along in my career and mm -hmm. uh, my personal life, I, I try to soften it a little bit. <laughs> I had somebody tell me, uh, Margo, you can step on a man's shoes without messing up the shine. Oh. So I said, I said, no, okay, okay that's, that's, that's not good. So let me just try not to step on the shoe at all. So I do, I do measure what I say, uh -huh. probably a lot better now than I did, say, 10 years ago. I got you. Um, so, but authenticity, I'd rather know where a person's coming from, what their truth is, what their mm -hmm. real truth is, and their core. It doesn't matter if we agree or disagree. I can pretty much sit down in a room with anybody, no matter what political persuasion they are, or what their belief systems are, whatever, mm -hmm. because at the, at the end of the day, there's a core here yes. that connects all of us as God's children. So I think being, but you have to be authentic, you know, with it. Mm -hmm. I think my own aspirations, I am so happy to be able to run a major uh, corporate foundation. This is what I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to be an executive vice president. And I, want, I wanted to be able to be in position to help others. I'm very proud of the track record that we have here at KeyBank um, because um, the vast majority of the dollars that we have in philanthropy do go and are applied to programs in the underserved community. Mm -hmm. So I get real misty when I think of, you know, who's being helped or when I get a letter. In fact, at Tri-C, um, last year I was at a program at Tri-C where I had a mother whose son was benefiting from the um, pre-college program that we were involved in, mm -hmm. uh, coming out of Cleveland schools and to uh, getting him ready to go on. And she came and she hugged me. She was crying. But that's what it's about. Exactly. That's what it's about. You know, I know that a lot more went into getting that young man to where he's supposed to be. But the point is, for that moment in that time, moment in that was how she extended her gratitude. She was probably extending her gratitude to the whole system, mm -hmm. and I happened to be the beneficiary of it. But I know that because we had funded the program, we had a very key part of making that happen. So, um, I, so I love what I'm doing and where I am in that regard. I think probably I could do this, you know, I, I don't have a time frame as to when I'm going to be tired of doing it. I'm not tired, so I mean, I'm really enjoying every moment. The company's very exciting now. We have a brand new CEO in Beth Mooney, okay. and she's providing extraordinary leadership for us, and not only leadership, but inspiration uh, for all that we can be. And, and these are very challenging times in our economy and for the banking industry. So to have a, a wonderful individual at the helm like that who is, uh, is, who is uh, inspiring all of us in the workforce and engaging us in the work and valuing the work that we do is, is very, very important. Um, I probably um, want to see myself on a beach soon. Uh, <gasps> Please, a, can I be your roadie? Yeah, right. <laughs> Please, can I be your roadie? <laughs> yeah, just to be on a beach, it'll be a bit more frequently. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, I prefer the Mediterranean yeah. or the Caribbean or Hawaii. Yeah. If so that, those three work for me too. <laughs> okay. Now, for all the programs, the services, everything that you do in your department, people, our audience who is interested, uh, potential candidates for employment, how do they connect with Key Bank and you? Well, um, I would, as I said earlier, that I, I would like them to go on key.com mm -hmm. and take a look at the opportunities that are there. And they can apply right online and um, go from there is probably the best way of doing that. 
Now, I don't do the hiring. I don't do the hiring. What I want to do is make sure we cultivate, you know, a good candidate pool so that the individuals can come in and then compete effectively for the position. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make sure that. So that's probably the most effective way. Is that the best that. place to reach, like, you directly for information about your philanthropic uh, and diversity type programs? Exactly. Key, uh, their key phone numbers? Key, uh, dot, key dot com would also... Lead to you? Key, yeah, well, key.com uh -huh. has a philanthropy site. So I it see. has a workplace site for a job board, if you will. Uh -huh. And then also, to learn all about the Key Bank Foundation, we have a philanthropy site that I'm very proud of, a corporate diversity site. In fact, we won an award from Diversity Inc. a few years back okay. on our um, website, diversity website. So I'm very proud. So it's very robust. And I'm excited about it. But um, certainly, the people really don't call anymore. So no, they email, they email or website. Yeah, <laughs> right. so if website yeah. is but the best But that was it. And then connection. the contact information is on um, key.com. That's fine and dandy. Now, one last uh, question. What's on the horizon for, uh, other than the football uh, situation coming up next year, anything immediate? We know you do the broad, one of the sponsors of the Broadway, no, you're the main sponsor of the Broadway series. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else is, is going on that you can talk about for special events, programs, projects coming up in the next few months? Well, I would say the, my favorite that we do with the, in partnership with the Cleveland Orchestra and the City of Cleveland is we sponsor the Martin Luther King Jr. concert that the orchestra performs. I used to sing with them, but you? life has taken yeah. me away oh, okay. from that okay. too. Yeah. I don't have vocal cords. I have a great appreciation for people who can sing, <laughs> but I'm not one of them. Yeah. But, um, well, I'm in a group of 100, <laughs> 240 <laughs> people. Right. Yeah. But we are the uh, lead sponsor again yes. for 2012 of that. Okay. It's always a glorious night, and again, it uplifts our children. Central State's choir, you know, has performed yes, uh -huh. historically in the past. Because I've been with them. I've performed while exactly. they were there, yeah. As well as a beautiful gospel choir. So mm -hmm. that's probably, when this is October, probably the next big thing. And that's around that January see. 17th, exactly. 18th, traditionally. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's Sunday before his birthday. Yes. 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 So, Margot James Copeland. It is, uh, unfortunately, the end of the time. But this has been such an exquisite experience, you know, oh, chatting with you and uh, be nice if we could chat over, you know, some Chablis yeah. and Chardonnay as well, just to relax and sure, kick back. Sure. Uh, but we certainly are proud and honored that you, you know, carved out a few minutes for us to bring our Wake Up and Live with the Arts uh, show to our audience in the greater Cleveland, Northeast Ohio community, as well as... Um, you know, our YouTube clips so that even more people can take advantage of learning about who you are, what your contributions are, and um, which is very important because speaking of, uh, you know, it's good to see, it sounds strange, but it's good to see minorities, African American women in particular, men too, don't get me wrong, but I, we talk about inspiration, I think you're right, our children, our community, really needs to see people of achievement, see that, see that it can be done. Because students coming from some of the environments and backgrounds, it's very difficult for them to see beyond their neighborhoods, to see that there are options out here where they can move on up and become who they are meant to be. And as I always say with everything I do, talking about honesty and integrity, I always tell the children, uh, to thine own self, be true, true from Correct. Shakespeare and I always Correct. close with that except when we end our program we always end up saying thank you for joining us thanks Lester Bryan our videographer and uh, Michelle Fay is uh, someone who is works with us on PR and marketing and of course Margot Copeland and we always end as I say I'm Sue Johnson be sure to wake up and live with the arts every day see you next time